So today's mission, I am going to head over to Robbie's house and meet the behavior specialist who works with Robbie at his day program and she's also at his group home. And that's one of the reasons why I moved him into this group home because of people like her that work in both locations so they can carry over all of the things that he learns. So we're gonna head over there today and um, talk about some things that we really would like Robbie to, uh, to work on and things that we need to keep consistent, for instance, he learned a few signs, some sign language when he was in school. He's losing that ability. He's starting to forget what those signs are because it hasn't been carried over really since he graduated. So this is something that I really want to pick back up again. I want to encourage the staff to always use signs. And here's another thing that's very interesting. Uh, Robbie had speech therapists and when we first started I was really confused I said I don't understand why does he need a speech therapist when he can't speak you know what is a speech therapist gonna do with him well what they do is they use a PEX system it's a picture exchange system and what Robbie does and a lot of kids like him will do is they will um, pull these pictures off and hand them to people as a way of communicating and requesting what they like. The way a school is set up uh, is you have a teacher and then you have several aides that work in the classroom. When my daughter taught here in New Jersey she had six kids in the class so it was Patty and two or three aides that worked in her classroom and she would be in charge and keep all the charts and write down all the programs and everything they needed to do. Now, over the teacher is a behavior specialist. So that's sort of um, an advancement that you move up after being a teacher and you become a behavior specialist. A behavior specialist will oversee, I think, maybe five classrooms uh, and they'll kind of, you know, go in and out and keep an eye on everything. If there's uh, a behavior issue, like a kid is having a violent tantrum and needs to be taken down, you know, that's what they call it. They, they have gymnastic mats and they'll put them into a hold because um, these kids can get really violent and aggressive. Um, you know, they'll call the behavior specialist and they'll come in. And the behavior specialist is the one that always works out all the strategies of how to handle each of these kids' behaviors because um, they're all, you know, very different. So um, there's a behavior specialist that works at Robbie's day program. So uh, I'm really happy about that. So she kind of oversees, you know, all the young adults that are there. And it's so great because they kind of carry over the same environment that Robbie's used to from his school. And that is so needed, so needed. So I'm gonna go meet with her today and we are gonna talk about um, some of the ways that we are going to work with Robbie. Look at happy boy today. Look at you. Hi cutie. You happy today? Yes? You are so happy today. <laughs> so this is Robbie's behavior specialist. Okay, hello. My name is Bianca Williams and I'm the behavior specialist for Robbie. So pretty much what I do as a behaviorist here is I work with the consumers, the residents, um, like Robbie, who have autism and other developmental disabilities. Um, and I assist them and the staff um, with coming up with ways to communicate better, dealing with um, other behavioral concerns that they may have, teaching them new skills, um, you know, sort of getting rid of the skills or the behavior that we don't want to see that they may have picked up in the past. Um, I work with training the staff that way when they're working with them directly every single day, just learning ways, you know, getting to know Robbie, learning how to communicate with him, learning what are those things that trigger him to have, you know, behaviors or, you know, aggressive behaviors or doing things that, you know, he shouldn't be doing. Um, teaching them how to address those issues and how to work with him so that he can be more um, successful um, both in the program and in the community in general. Give me an idea of what type of behaviors, not just from Robbie, but just mm -hmm. in general from the population, like what type of behaviors uh, do you usually see and why? It's usually because they, they, don't, they can't communicate. Right, so a lot of times for the 
um, consumers that we have who are nonverbal, a lot of times the behaviors that we see are, you know, it could be something as simple as maybe pulling you towards an item that they want, or maybe it's um, using signs or symbols that are not very effective in telling you what it is that they want. So sometimes people may, um, you know, run out of the room or someone may hit, you know, someone else or someone... Or hit themselves. Right. There's a lot of self-injurious behaviors such as biting mm -hmm. um, themselves or banging their heads. Um, sometimes we see people who may um, have issues with going to the bathroom so maybe they don't know how to ask to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. um, and these are some of the behaviors that we're working towards you know teaching them how to communicate effectively and how to ask for what it is that they want so that they don't have to hurt themselves or hurt other people right, right. or you know just learning how to use the, the bathroom approach so that they can function in the community without you know, needing to, you know, wear incontinence products or think along those natures that, you know, may not be, you know, as stigmatizing um, in the community. Thing. It, you know, it does take a while to teach the, you know, teach our individuals how to function and to work and communicate effectively. It takes a while to teach them new skills or to get rid of old skills that they may have picked up. Um, but it's good to work, like you said, to work with the families and the parents, to work with the day program staff, to work with the residential staff if they live in a group home. Right. Because all of us have to be on the same page when working with them. We can't teach him one thing at home and then expect that he's going to do something completely different right. at the day program. So everybody has to be a part of the whole team and work together. And that's why, you know, that's my job to go in and train everybody and to work with everybody, get everyone's input um, so that it's not just me, you know, writing a plan for one person when they may see something or know something about um, the person like Robbie um, that I may not ever see or know. So um, can you show me how we're going to teach Robbie how to communicate? We're going to use the PEC system, yes. right? So I'm going to stand over your shoulder okay. and you can show me some of the photos and show, show us what we're going to do with Robbie. Okay, so here are two different PEC books. Um, one's a larger book um, and this is good for especially when you're first teaching them how to use it. So in this book there are certain pictures and they're labeled. And we like to use pictures that each of the residents um, or individuals that we work with can actually, you know, that they like to use or, or do and things that are familiar to them okay. so that they can request it when they need it. So here's just a few pictures of things. Um, for, that he from, might want to request. Right, that he may want to request, whether it's a food item. That way he has the opportunity to make choices on his own and the staff aren't making those choices for him. Okay. So this is a good thing. So Helps again, him become independent. Exactly. And also eliminates the frustration that he can't communicate and temper tantrums. And exactly. He can request what he wants. Right, so a lot of times, like we said, they, you know, be, begin to get agitated or frustrated when you can't communicate what you want or don't want. Right. And that's what these books are for. And then we've got a travel size. And this is a travel size, so it comes with the handle here. Okay. Um, and it also comes with this strip. So what happens is this book should be carried with the um, individual wherever they go. Because again, if I'm holding on to their book, mm -hmm. they can't communicate their words to me if I'm holding on to their words. Okay. So they should be holding on to this, and what happens is these pictures will all be inside of a book. Okay. Sometimes they're, um, you know, and on different pages for different things, and he should mm -hmm. be able to know what it is. So if he wanted to request something from me, he could say that he needs a break. He would be re required to put this on a strip, and then he's going to hand this to the staff person that he wants to communicate with. Okay. What happens is the staff will then need to turn this around and say, okay, Robbie, you need a break. Okay. Then you automatically allow him to have that break. Okay. That teaches him that if he communicates effectively in the appropriate way, okay. then he can get what he wants rather than, you know, acting out or walking away from the activity. Okay. Um, he's going to request this instead. Okay. So that goes for anything that's in his book. You know, it can be... You know that he wants to go to bed so again he's gonna search in his book for which picture it is that he wants okay. and we teach them you know we'll go over this and it's good for you know like you said before matching so then he gets to know that this picture right. is a symbol for going to bed okay and every individual is different so maybe you know 
this is a picture of someone's actual bed. Right. And that's familiar to them. You want you have a picture you have some of your own computer yes. generated. So then here are a few of the this is from a, a program that's called Board Maker, which is a computer software and they have um, different pictures that are, you know, very standard. Mm -hmm. That way it actually um, goes from like, so if you were to go to another program in the future and they created a book, these would be the same exact pictures that they would have. Okay. Or a maker is just very general and it goes across all mm -hmm. um, organizations. So the same way, this is a standard size and the standard pictures, but mm -hmm. like you said, Robbie does well with actual, you know, real life pictures. Yes. And that's something that, you know, as a behavior specialist, we need to know because maybe this doesn't relate to him and the real pictures do. So right. we want to use whatever's going to work for him, um, whatever he'll understand and know. And that's what we use to communicate. And then hopefully he, he won't have behaviors. Exactly. That's so the plan. That's your... <laughs> different reasons so we can use them to um you know for him to communicate with us mm -hmm. and we can also communicate with him so we can use these pictures to set up a schedule and list okay first we're going to do laundry mm -hmm. then we can take a break right then we can you know take a shower right and then get ready to go to bed so right that way he can see this and sometimes people who are not hurt maybe they don't understand what i'm saying right there are some individuals who do understand you know, have great receptive language and others right. who don't Right. Um, so it's good to use pictures and words and, you know, label them that way they have that understanding and can learn, you know, what it is that's planned for them and how to communicate. Right. And then, and some of them, they, they're fearful because they don't know what the schedule is for the day and they don't know what's coming next. Right. Right. So this helps them. Sometimes we need to show them the schedule for the day so they exactly. know what's coming next. Yep. And it's good, sometimes it's good to break it down. So if you want to have like a morning schedule and go over that, and then maybe when they come back from day program, you can go over the schedule for the evening. Right. And then that way, you know, there's no surprises. He yes. You know, he's not, you know, going to shop right when he thinks he's going swimming. And there you go. <laughs> yes. Because that's when we tend to see behavior. So if he yes. has a routine mm -hmm. um, and he's used to, you know, every Tuesday he goes to the Y at 4 o'clock. Yep. And then all of a sudden he's driving and gets the shop break, you may yes. start to see behavior that you don't want to see. Right. Um, so it's important to go through that schedule with them every day. Mm -hmm. That way if something does need to change, you can let them know ahead of time and not wait until right. it's too late. Right. Thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was awesome. And I am so, so encouraged after sitting down and talking with her she is still in there at the house and she's talking with the staff and she's training the staff and she's going to be coming um, and working with them and establishing a whole routine for Robbie of things to do to keep him busy he's going to learn how to do his own laundry set the table uh, they're setting up activities for him um, Saturdays he's going to go to the Y and go swim and um, uh, I, I can already see a huge difference and this is the best I just had this conversation with the woman that um, has been steadily staying with him and sticking it out with Robbie and working with him the past three nights at 8 15 Robbie got up on his own and just went to bed and got in his bed and went to sleep which is huge that means Robbie's comfortable now he's falling into a routine he's understanding now that this is his home and when he saw the other three guys go to bed he went to bed and went to sleep and today he's smiling he's in a great mood I cannot tell you how ecstatic I am right now